All right, guys, so we're still at it. I got the ridge line number two right here on this tree behind me. Trail coming this way. And then right behind me here is a main travel corridor right here where this is actually an old rub and an old scrape. If you watch my Defender review, pretty sure that's the same tree, but this has definitely got historic sign here. Um, multiple mature bucks kind of travel right through here kind of goes right through the heart of the property and they can get the doe bedding down at this end and they can get the doe bedding down at this end of the property so um as you can see there's like a ridge over here sorry to keep swinging you around but and there's a ridge behind me this way so right where i'm standing i'm actually on the trail it's a flat or flat it's definitely a lot flatter than traveling the ridges so i feel like they use this to kind of you know sun check the does and get to where they need to as quick as possible without like climbing hills and stuff like that you know i'm going to show you one more tip i know i'm just full of them things today but um as you can see the camera's up there um i don't have the ridge line facing straight down this trail where the deer are going to be coming you want to angle it so you don't want the camera parallel to the trail you want it crossing the trail it just makes it easier for the camera to pick up the game and be triggered so that's just a tip to keep in mind when we set the first ridge line out as well i kept it i mean you gotta pick the best tree you can i understand that so if you if it at all is possible just try to angle it to where you're not catching them straight on you just want to you know you want them to cross it okay so I think we accomplished that on both of these. We're going to let these things soak, guys. I wanted to let you know today is October 25th. So that rut's right around the corner. Um, luckily, I was able to, you know, sneak in here today. Like I said, you can hear the wind behind me. We got some wind noise cover, and I'm still leaving my scent everywhere. But I had to get these out for you guys um, and let them soak. So... But it's a beautiful day. I mean, it's 75 right now. I'm hoping for a cold front. We got some rain coming, like I said, before tonight and over the weekend. The temperature is so, supposed to drop. So um, I'm going to try to get in the tree as soon as possible. I got another stand to hang at last minute. It is what it is, though. That's how it goes. But I felt like this was the best spot for right now to put this defender on. There's no scrape or nothing behind me. But I, I know they use this to travel. So... We should be getting some kind of activity definitely on both of them. So we're going to watch that close. And when the big boys start showing up in daylight, we'll be in that tree. All right, make sure you stay tuned. I'll drop the pictures and standard definition and high def into this review so you guys can check them out. I'll show you the pictures through the app and stuff like that so you're familiar with that as well. But uh, I'm going to try to focus on hunting for a little bit and try to do this video, you know, in between as much as I can. But... Um, I gotta get my head in the right place right now even though this is part of it these will definitely these cellular cameras will definitely help me get on a buck so i'm pumped about that and uh all right guys i gotta quit talking i actually went back this way which is a part of the property i don't really mess with but you know i was trying to find a place to put the new stand and it's, it's looking like they're funneling right through here to get to that doe bedding the property where i'm at is wide but it gets real narrow <laughs> that was probably horrible it gets uh if i had two hands i'd meet them right here it gets narrow going this way so you know i was looking and scouting in there to try to figure out where to put the stand at and i was like you know what i hung another trail camera down there where it's it funnels real good so i'm hoping to get some good video footage on that browning as well that's just a regular one that was the recon force edge i believe so anyway that's one more tip if you got a part of the property that you don't really never hunted or leave alone that might be the best spot on the property um took me a while to figure that out here because there's dough bedding and stuff but i had multiple mature box two years ago using this trail i'm on and that dough bedding trail that we cut in um a lot so don't sleep on nothing all right guys that's it all right guys change of plans i walked probably 10 yards from where i was and look down here next to me nice size scrape right here 
Um, I got the brownie right here on this tree. Sorry, my balance was all over the place. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna put it where I put um, the defender on that review. So as you can see, like I'm gonna try to show you um, the deer trail this way, deer trail this way. So they're like intersecting right where I'm standing. One going that way. Some old rubs on that tree. Um, there's pretty much trails going everywhere back here. So a lot of stuff happening. Um, I just wanted to show you that. So that's where we're going to leave it. Look for those intersecting trails, guys. Them corridors. You know, there's another flat part of the property in between the ridges. And uh, they're using it. So I'd rather put it on fresh sign than older stuff even though historic stuff can still be good um we'll see what we get on this if we don't get anything we'll move it um no big deal but i just wanted to share that with you guys all right stay tuned to see what shows up it was a little bit odd seeing a scrape here with no licking branch or nothing overhead but it makes sense to be where it is just because the layout of the property and these intersecting trails so we'll see hopefully a monster shows up on this thing Alright guys, so walking out, and here we go, on the same scrape trail I just showed you. Um, got this limb broken off right here, looks like a rub there, um, might not be too old, so there we go, we're on to something. Definitely good to find some sign going on here, um, and that's right in line. We got the, I don't know if you can see it, the defender's right there. The scrape's right over there. Um, you know, that that looking branch is broke right there. Looks like they broke one off right here. Let's try to show you guys. Um, it's all broken off. That's stuff you want to look for. Uh, you can see they hit it right here. I think we're gonna go ahead and leave. I can't move it again, I don't think. So I'm gonna leave it there because whatever comes through here is traveling that way anyway and they'll hit that uh they'll hit that scrape. So but this is this is what you wanna look for hanging over a trail, something overhead for them to hit. It's weird they didn't make the scrape right there. I don't know, there's like a down tree right here and some other stuff. Maybe that's why, but guys, there's so many trails right here, like there's usually too when you find a scrape they'll be in line so depending how hard you want to scout i'm not going to go that hard right now because i found what i needed um the property don't go too much further this way we got thick stuff this way so all right guys stay tuned all right guys i'm going to show you here uh the video off the ridge line this is high video mode on the left versus the archer on the right I really didn't know that I had it set to high um, until later, but it kind of worked out so I can sh compare the two for you guys and you can see the difference. In low light, both of them seem to uh, struggle with graininess, but during the day here, here's the ultra video. It looks pretty good. Um, you can definitely see you know, a difference in the ultra mode versus the high, but if you want to conserve battery life, you're probably better off going with the high mode me personally like i just run the cellulars for pictures so it's not really a camera that you know i will be getting specifically for video um brownie offers a ton for both though so here's another you know 10 30 at night ultra video looks like a doe coming in i got a little bit of corn down there here's a high video mode a little bit more up close shot you know in the evening here's a fox Looks like he's hungry. Trying to figure out what's going on. There were some raccoons. Can't get rid of these things. <laughs> a couple of them did grab the camera and turn it upside down. And I had to fix it. Um, here's a little buck here. Coming in for a late night snack. Almost 1.30 in the morning. 
I did also with the video guys notice a lot of static noise in the majority of the videos so maybe that's something that can be fixed with a future update. I think this is actually a buck guys. It looks like he shed, you can see his head, he looks like he shed his antlers already but that right front leg looks messed up. Um, not sure what happened to him but I just wanted to show you guys some examples of the video on the Defender Ridgeline. Alright guys, we're going to do this one on a computer. We're going to log in at StrikeForceWireless.com and I'm going to show you how to preview a video. Just click on the thumbnail. All the yellow play signs are videos. I did the HD upload on this one. You have to do that to preview a video. It does have sound. It's just you're not going to hear it because I'm screen recording, but the quality is not as good because of the cellular transmission. Here's a standard definition one. You can't play it because I didn't HD upload, so just keep that in mind. And then if you hover over a thumbnail, it'll give you the date, the time, the moon phase, and the temperature. But I just wanted to show you the videos and how they look inside the app and the website. Okay, I'm going to show you real quick how to do an HD upload request. Just click the image, actions, request HD file, submit. You'll get a little gray HD icon on the thumbnail on the top right to, know, to let you know it's processing. Once it's complete, it'll turn yellow to let you know you got an HD file. Now we're going to go to sort. You can sort your pictures by time, date, pressure, moon phase. Let's go ahead and hit the moon phase and this will show you all the movement by moon phase, which is a really cool feature through the app and um, the Strike Force website. Um, we're gonna go back, look at these a little bit more. We're gonna go back up to sort and we'll do this one. Um, let's do, we'll do temperature uh, hottest to coldest. And it's gonna show you all the movement based on temperature go through a couple of these so you guys can see that's one of them real hot days um, and then we're gonna go back to sort and we're gonna do pressure lowest to highest so pretty cool um, you can go through these and select what you want um, whatever works best for you I just think it's a really handy thing to have um, just to try to pattern these deer and figure out what's going on all right let's go back um, I'm gonna show you how to do like multiple HD request at once, select photos, click them, and then you know, do the request HD file. And this is the same on both the app and the website. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you real quick how to do a software update on the uh, Browning Defender Ridgeline. I had a couple issues with HD uploads. Um, I did call into them, and they told me at first I should immediately do. The update because I was having like a NA signal or my signal was real weak and then when I would try to upload a HD picture through the Strike Force app it just wouldn't upload so I'm gonna walk you guys through it real quick it, it's real easy you go to Browning's website and you just drag the file onto a blank SD card I'm gonna show you right here how to do the update so I'm taking make sure the cameras off I'm taking the old SD card out I'm putting the one in that's got the update file on it. And then we're going to power it on. We're going to hit mode, software, upgrade, hit enter on it. And then you're going to change that to yes. And then hit enter again. It's going to say upgrading, then it's going to power off, and then it's going to power back on. And once it does that, the update's complete. So that's all there is to it. I'll show you though. See it powered off and then it's going to power right back on to let you know it's successfully updated. And that's it. I'm just going to power off and then put my other SD card in. But that's basically it. I just wanted to show you guys that and uh, I'll go into this stuff more in the video as well. Alright guys, it's time to wrap this video up. It's like mid-January. We put the Browning Defender Ridgeline out like October 25th I think it was right before the rut and I didn't know how I was going to do this video usually usually I don't run the cameras until the batteries go out completely because the Brownings they have excellent battery life so anyway I decided to go ahead and check the lifespan on these ridge lines to see how much battery life you guys will get because I do get that question a lot and instead of just generalizing it like two months was the average with the regular defender and this one's kind of unique because i put two of them out 
So on the first ridge line, it went from October 25th to January 16th. And that took 2,195 pictures. And I did set it to video because I was trying to kill it because I had to get this video out for you guys. So keep that in mind as well. But the second one ran from October 25th to December 20th and it took 825 pictures. So keep that in mind. We're still getting like a two month average. So I wanted to get this right for you guys. So I called in the Browning and they said, for the Defender Ridgeline, you'll get anywhere from two to four months of battery life on a you know a brand new set of lithium batteries. So, like I said earlier in the beginning of the video, around two months was my average. So that's the best I can answer that question, guys. Now, as far as why the second Ridgeline didn't take as many pictures as the first, I should have did the update, guys, right away. I was in the middle of hunting, and then just time got away from me, so. A lot of people don't realize a lot of these issues that you have with your trail cameras, you can go and do a software update and it fixes, you know, a lot of them. So if you're having an issue, go on Browning's website. They list all their cameras they have updates for. It's real simple. I showed you earlier in this video how to do the software upgrade. You just drag it on an SD card, pop it in a camera, you know, let it do its thing. And then that's basically it. It's simple. Um, Anyway, I don't want to get off track here, but, you know, the update, I feel like, could have affected the battery life, but that Browning also said it would die pretty quick if that was the issue. So maybe it wasn't. You got to take into consideration, too, battery life depends on, you know, temperature, activity. Um, I think, you know, if you don't have the best signal and it's constantly trying to search for a signal, um, that can be a factor, too. So there's a lot that weighs into it. You know, I think that's one of the reasons why I kind of, try to steer away from specifics and I you know try to give you guys an average but even with me not doing an update I didn't do it on neither one of the cameras so um, I did it after I took them out but even without it it got a solid two months of battery life and I think that's pretty good um, it served my purpose and you can go with the solar route if that's not enough you know time or pictures or videos um, that gets me into the next thing um, I did have issues doing the HD uploads and you can't preview the videos if you set the original in the video mode you can't preview it unless you do the HD upload so so once I took the cameras out of the woods I brought them back home and I did the update the software update and everything's working perfect I don't have no issues I tested the HD on picture and video and it both sent successfully right away you know quick the Defender Ridgeline still takes excellent pictures um the quality of the pictures is right where you know it usually is with browning so it's a good cell camera like you get good battery life out of it you, you know you can the app's really easy to use and it takes good pictures quality pictures which is what i'm looking for um, in a cellular trail camera i don't usually run cellular trail cameras on video anyway guys i think most people are just looking for that picture real time to figure out you know, when the bucks are moving in daylight, you know, during a rut, or if you're after a target buck and he's on your hit list and you need to know information right away to decide on, you know, how you're going to approach that buck. So Browning did recommend me to do the software update immediately um, because my signal was reading like NA or I'd get like one bar. So it does... I believe from you know what they were saying like if you're having that issue it will fix that too now you know I was in an area where I only have one or two bars but the camera still worked good so if you're having you know if you don't think that's good enough for me it was I've had experience with other cellular cameras that had you know it just depends on where you place these things like a, a lot of the times I got them between two ridges it's sitting low and you know our hunting areas there's not a lot of great cell tower coverage so it just depends where you have them i think too when you're looking at like okay how long did the camera last on a set of batteries you gotta look at the length of time too on the ridgeline number two is still time frame wise was out in you know for two months um, and it you know took around a little over 800 pictures that's also in very cold temperatures um i'm in maryland so it does get below freezing here 
it wasn't freezing the entire time, but I'm just saying like the cold will drain batteries quicker. So that's just something else you guys wanna keep in mind too. So you'll see as we go through some of the pictures, I had the Ridgeline over a bait pile. You know, that's a great feature with the Ridgeline is you can put a photo delay on. So like, you know, I was getting a lot of raccoons at night, which I don't wanna see. So I was able to just put like a five minute, I think it's all the way up to an hour you can do. So that way you're not burning through your cellular plane and wasting money on pictures that you're not wanting to see. So that's, you know, another tip I just wanted to give you guys. Um, it's actually something I didn't think about prior to this. And for some reason it clicked this time around. And, you know, I just go, went ahead and put the photo delay on. That way I was, you know, getting what I wanted to. All right, also guys, you know, I mentioned this at the beginning of the video. Um, this Ridgeline has dual carrier technology. So all you have to do is call in a customer service. And if you're having problems with, you know, one of the carriers not have a signal, you can have them switch it over the phone. That way, you know, you can see if you can get better signal with another carrier. I thought that was really awesome. You know, that saves you from buying a whole nother camera. We went over that, um, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention in case you guys had that question. Okay, so the Hunter Plus and the Guide Pro are the only two plans offered right now by Browning that lets you, you know, upload video wirelessly. So. Um, this camera does do video wirelessly like you know we went over but I just wanted to let you know make sure you look out for them plans because not all their plans offer it. Okay so once you pick your plan it's an additional five dollars for each line and I think you can do up to three or four cameras I believe it is. Um, all right um, I think I covered everything um, that I wanted to go over. So my final thoughts on the Defender Ridgeline, guys, I think this is for somebody that's looking for a reliable cell camera that takes really high quality pictures and, you know, has good battery life. So if, the, you know, that's what you're in the market for, I think it's fairly priced, you know, a little over 200 bucks. You kind of get what you pay for in that manner with these trail cameras. It's not the most expensive. It's not the cheapest. It's kind of right in the middle. I feel like Browning does a really good job of that. And, you know, most of the time from what I've seen, you're getting that quality. Um, so, like, if, if that's what you guys are looking for, I think this camera would do a great job for you. I hope this video helped you guys out. Um, if you wound up picking up a Defender Ridgeline after watching this video, please let me know down in the comments section. Um, if there's something else you guys want to see or if there's something I didn't go over that you guys would like to see, drop a comment, let me know. Also... I do a ton of Browning Trail camera reviews. Um, it's all I really use, guys. They're my favorite uh, for a lot of reasons, and I'll drop the videos down in the video description below. So if you guys are looking for another model or you know, you're just looking to see what they have to offer, go down in the video description below and check them out. Um, I got a, a bunch of them, like I said. I'll be doing future trail camera reviews from Browning too, so just make sure you guys stay tuned to the channel. And by doing that, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you turn that notification bell on too, guys. So, you know, when I got a new upload, it'll notify you guys right away. Like this video if you liked it. Definitely let me know, um, you know, what you thought. You know, trail cameras can be awesome tools to help us, you know, harvest that buck we're after. So, you know, I, I trust Browning to that. Um, their customer service has always been consistently good. And that tells you a lot about a company right away. Also, I'm going to link down below or I'll put it on the end screen, um, my opening day velvet buck. I have some awesome video footage off of the Brownings, um, you know, that helped me keep an eye on him and, you know, led up to the harvest of that buck. It was a nice 10 point still in velvet. Other than that, guys, that's it for this one. Um, thanks for watching. I, you know, I tried to keep this as short as I can. It wound up going into two parts. I just don't want to put one huge long video on. I want to give you guys the option, but you kind of got to watch them both through to, you know, get all the details. So I'll catch you on the next one. You have officially been outdoored.